life, love, and lipstick. Hey, welcome to Life, Love, and Lipstick with Leslie Stewart and Tracy Lynn. Earlier this week, we had a chance to catch up with somebody. We had a great interview with uh, Carol Star Taylor from Star Publishing, which, what her energy is Mm -hmm. so contagious. I loved it. And I love she's taken control of her life and and she helps other people with their story. So you go back and create your story and write your own life book. So would you ever write a story about your life, Leslie? You know, I've had people tell me to (laughs) because of my interesting stories in the CFL. Um, But I don't know. It seems so tedious. But, you know, as she said, it's very cathartic. So I perhaps might. Yeah. And, um, you know, not even writing it, but maybe it's an audio book. Yeah, exactly. That could be fun. I don't know. I never really, I just, as I say, I don't know if I'd ever have time for it. I keep myself too busy and you probably the same, but would you do it? I don't know. I know the same thing. I've been asked many times to write my book Mm -hmm. and because I encourage a lot of, a lot of women through all Mm -hmm. my motivational speeches and stuff, my one-on-ones that I've done with women and even men, I, I encourage them to write their story and tell their story. Mm -hmm. And then I finally got someone saying to me, Hey, You keep telling everyone else to do it. Why aren't you doing it? And it goes back to, I don't know if I'm, I was vulnerable on the show once. I don't know. It's a hard wall to knock down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, you know what, Carol say people, as people listen to Carol today, maybe uh, they'll get thinking about writing their own book as well. So yes. And she has (laughs) lots of great life advice and uh, she can tell us a little bit about herself. So uh, stick around guys. I want you guys to check this out. Leslie, it's always a pleasure. Thanks you too, Trace. Well, let's bring in another sisterhood member, Carol Star Taylor, who's joining us today on Life, Love, and Lipstick. Thanks for joining us today. (laughs) Hello, Carol. Hey, thank you for having me, you guys. Yes, Uh, it's uh, fun. mm -hmm. Okay, first off, I got to say, you look incredible for being in a pandemic. (laughs) Oh, thank you. (laughs) You know what? I got to tell you, um, so I'm 57. I turned 57 in November. Mm-hmm. And I said to myself, um, okay, no more, you know, playing around. This is my year. This is my year of health. This is my mm-hmm. year of getting myself back on track Girl. and no, no excuses. So yes. that's, I've actually put myself together and, and this is my year of yes. My year of yes. For I love it. Everything. Yes. Good for you. And you know what? People need to hear that because sometimes it, it takes a bit, you know, it, that you need almost like a, a bit of a trigger point. You need a point where that day you're going to wake up that morning and say no more. Right. Well, I, you know what? I, I mean, uh, I lost, uh, I, like both my parents are gone. Um, my, my, the trigger really for me, I think was when you start to reach the age, your parents were <laughs> when they pass. Um, and, and so it's kind of like, holy crap, I'm not ready to go. I'm just getting started. Well, yeah. I mean, you're only 57. Like, it, right. Right? And, and, yeah. And my dad passed away at 58, wow. um, like 20 something year, you know, 24 years ago or whatever, yeah. 22 years ago. And so for me, it was about, okay, this is, this is just not happening anymore. We're just going to take control. Um, I've changed my eating. I've changed my, my lifestyle. I've incorporated a lot of uh, meditation in my life and, and awesome. essential oils and, and even being more spiritual than I am, which I was before. Um, but really, you know, um, I, I think a lot of it had to do with my, my eating. And, and so mm-hmm. I dropped weight and, and kind of incorporated some exercise and just being, you know, yeah. being more present too. being more present. Yes. Well, I love your energy. Your mm-hmm. energy is just so contagious, which is something that we need right now. Yeah. Um, but I want to, um, I want to talk about you. I mean, I know that you've made some life changes. You are also a publisher. You own your own company. You are a boss, babe. Mm-hmm. You, you are empowering you. Um, it's social media. We will definitely have your links up so that the rest of our sisterhood can follow you. Now you have a book and you, you mean, you're a motivator. You have leveled up and you, you teach women to level up and own their story, not only by talking about their story, but publishing their story, which being vulnerable, it's a hard place to go to. Uh It's a hard place to stay. So you say, um, you mentioned stuck the word stuck. 
when it comes to your book that you previously have written and you said, are you stuck spinning your wheels, searching for happiness, love, money, or purpose? Where Mm. does that statement come from? It's pretty powerful. Mm. Well, I think that, you know, growing up um, and and kind of, and I would say, you know, if you took a look at my resume, you would say, oh my God, you know, like you're bouncing, there's like almost nothing you haven't done. Um, And yet everything that I've, I've, I've done um, really has come everything together. Whereas when, when I had separated uh, from in my marriage um, and a long-term marriage and I was looking for a job, I went to a headhunter and she said, you know, I can't, you're, you're like, you know, I can't place you anywhere. You, Mm. you are like, you know, you don't fit in anywhere. And, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and so and nothing matches and I'm thinking to myself, okay, and so it took me a few years to actually realize it all matches. It's all like a puzzle piece sure. that all comes together. And so for somebody to say that you're unemployable, mm-hmm. well, yeah, okay. So you think to yourself, okay, well, I'm 50, you know, at that time I was, you know, 40, 40, I don't know, 48 or, or something like that. And, you know, okay, how many people want to employ a 48 year old, whatever it is. And so I, I felt stuck, like, where am I? What is my purpose you know, where do I see myself as, as a, a woman who, you know, um, who was married for a long time and her whole life, for most part, was devoted um, to building, you know, a husband and, and, you know, kids and doing all those things. And, and yet I felt that there was like this fire inside me, like I'm not, I'm not even touching my potential. And, you know, I did work and I did do other things, but I'm saying that even in my jobs, I could never fulfill my potential. So I was never, you know, what is my purpose? And, and so a lot of that stuckness, um, you know, really does come from, okay, so where am I? Who am I? You know, and what am I, you know, what am I meant to be here? Obviously I'm meant to do something, but what is it? Yeah. 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 Right. I think that feeling of stuck is probably one of the hardest things for a human being to go through. Um, and, and I know I've, I've said that those words exact where I felt stuck and I have felt actually stuck for a very long time. And it can be in a marriage, like any kind of relationship, it can be in your work. It can be in all of them at once, um, you know, as you're alluding to, but it's, that is not because you feel powerless, right? It's just, it's a tough feeling to be stuck. Well, it is. And, and I think that a lot of people don't know how to take their power back. Mm -hmm. and and what that really means um and what and and i think that you know people throw around all kinds of words and and as actually you know the past 11 years have changed since i've you know um moved from from that situation to now you know what empowerment really means what does self-love really mean what is self-esteem self-worth and and how to you know, and, and, you know, I mean, even taking the pandemic, I mean, none of us have ever seen anything like this going on. And depending on where you live, um, really, there's a level of, you know, um, you're stuck at home, stuck here, stuck here. Mm -hmm. But also stuck is a mindset. And I realize that stuck is a mindset more than anything physical. Um, You know, because when you look at the past year, even, um, there are people that have been stuck and that they haven't been able, they're almost like frozen in time. They don't know where to go, what to do with themselves. And then there are other people that have used this time to pivot and and to either take courses or um, reevaluate themselves and and the relationships and and their their, uh, businesses. And how do I take my business now online? How do I get myself out there? So, I mean, there's a lot Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so stuck really is, you know, how you see yourself in the world um, and, and, you know, and, and how to, un- you know, this unstuckness. Yes. And, um, I mean, I've been working on my, on my next book, oh God, for over a year and a half, like my own. And I don't know, can I say a certain word on here? Yes. Sure. Okay. So it's called Life Unfucked. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, it really is about, you know, moving beyond stuck and it's moving beyond that and and to really you know move to the na- the next level and and you know almost like how did we get here and when you kind of look at yourself just just like you kind of don't you sometimes you just kind of shake your heads like okay like what the hell just happened yep you yep. know whether it's been relationships or you blink and all of a sudden you're you know you think you're 30 but you're 50 yeah or you're 40 and it's like yeah you <laughs> mentally feel old Mm -hmm. than what you are. And you said at the beginning, you were on, you know, you were looking for a job, but we were labeled. Many of us can relate to this. We were labeled as the wife. We were labeled as a mom. Mm -hmm. Then you go into the workforce because life changes. You go back because it's typically the female that puts her life on hold or her career. Mm -hmm. I should say Mm -hmm. not life, her career. Mm -hmm. And you go back and then you find out, well, life's different than it was when I, when I left, I don't fit in here. So you talk about identifying what is stopping you from becoming the best version of you. Well, how can you be the best version of yourself when there's so many people telling us Mm -hmm. who we are or labeling us a certain way? I I think what ends up happening is that we end up, um, well, I mean, you know, we, through a whole process, I mean, I I would say from a personal standpoint, I lost myself. Yeah. So oh, huge. Every, okay. I think I could totally definitely relate to that. Right. So, I mean, you lose yourself and then you're like, and, and you really start to absorb even from childhood, um, what everybody else tells you, you are mm-hmm. and, and who you were. And I wasn't, I mean, the thing is that I, I ran businesses, I did things, but when, you know, you're self-employed, then you go look for another job. Oh, they don't look at that. Oh, right. that doesn't count. Oh, that doesn't count. But you know, it's more than it's it's more than that. I think that it's it's unlearning. You spend your you know, and I think that in my next book, you know, I talk about unfucking yourself. I mean, you spend your lifetime getting all fucked up. Mm-hmm. This one, this one, this one, this one tells you, you know, your siblings have this idea of you, you yeah. know, because you know, of what mom and dad said and mm-hmm. what you used to get into trouble for. And now they're grown ups, but they're still looking at you as mm-hmm. the sibling from what like you haven't talking. progressed at all. It, exactly. Like nothing has happened in your you're life. Still nine. <laughs> you know, 40 years. Yeah. And, and so so your siblings have a view of you, your your ex-boyfriends or partners or, or whatever they have their ver- version of what you are um your ex-husband if you have one of those they have a version of what you are your children have a version of what you are your friends have version of what you are and you kind of have to figure out okay well out of all of those things who the hell am I yeah because they're telling me who I am and am I really that and I think that that's where you know, you have to kind of say, I'm none of those things, guys. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you either, this is me and this is the new me. And so if you didn't know me, if you knew me a year ago, you don't know me at all. Right. Because, and and mm-hmm. so that is, and, and that's where um, the new thing that I'm, I'm kind of working toward and the new book that I'm doing, a compilation book, um, so that people can share their stories. Is, it's the High Vibe Society. And I think that what you're, you know, it's, it's through the Soulology Chronicles and Soulology is the knowledge of your soul. So mm-hmm. I have 18 wonderful authors for uh, the Soulology book Voices, which will be coming out in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now, you know, this is for 2022. And I think that, you know, where we're, you know, where we're at now, we need to raise our vibrations. We need to, we've been so low I mean, you know, what's been happening, um, you know, with, with, uh, with business and shutdowns and this, it is debilitating emotionally. Yeah. It is. It, and, and so, you know, I think that it's, and, and people, you know, being with their kids 24 hours a day, uh, homeschooling, all of these things, it is, it is emotionally and physically draining. I mean, I, I see people, they're depleted. We gotta, you know, we gotta keep ourselves high. We gotta mm-hmm. keep ourselves you know, mm-hmm. high and grounded at the same time. So mm-hmm. how do we do that? Yeah. Right. Well, you made that decision to consciously rip off the bandaid, right? Absolutely. You said, okay, I'm making a choice. I'm going to be the best version of me. Yeah. And we talked about like how people perceive who you are and they tell you who you are. And you're just trying to figure out like, am I really that person? Well, maybe I was that person at that stage of my life, but you're, let's talk about the relationship with yourself right now. Mm-hmm. Sure. Is it an how are you so honest with yourself? How are you able to do that? 
You know, it's funny. Um, I accept myself for, for, for me. Okay. That doesn't mean that I don't want to make any changes, but you accept yourself for the way you are right this minute, right, right now. Mm-hmm. And that you love yourself in all your messiness and all mm-hmm. your bullshit and all your, you know, I mean, you've got to call yourself up on your own stuff. Okay. Right. Nobody's perfect. So what we do is we, we take a look, we nitpick at our own selves and say, what can we improve on? So, mm-hmm. you know, for me, but I call it like it is, I'm a straight shooter. If I say, listen, I, you know, I don't, I don't call myself fluffy. Okay. I'm, I'm overweight. I got to worry. I got to work on that. What do I need to do? Boom. Um, you know, and, and, and what my new normal is going to be. Okay. And what makes me, and it's not about a number or a size or anything like that. It's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's, it's really, um, you know, when you love yourself in all of your glory, Mm -hmm and not so glory and you take it all Mm -hmm. um i think that you you really recognize that you're unstoppable Mm -hmm. now you know you were talking about all these different people that you know come into our lives from the very beginning from our siblings to right you know to exes and friends and whatever um you know i think we can all relate where sometimes some of those people are holding us back and i know that you know there's been that conversation over the last few years where you know what maybe that person shouldn't be in your life anymore because they're just there and you can feel it in the room when you're with, and maybe identify that kind of toxic person and they are holding you back. So, you know, and it maybe however you want to do it gracious way, you move on from that relationship. Well, I think that a lot of, I think a lot of that has to do with self-love. Yes. Okay. And, and so it, it's, again, it's protecting your energy. Um, now in some cases, people, I've heard people say to me, oh, I can't do that. I can't cut those people out of my life. I can't do that. Well, well, actually you can. And, and, and I've done it. And, and so, um, now it's not pretty, not pretty. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you never, let's say, for example, family. Okay. So family, (laughs) let's take family that you were actually, uh, related to not divorced from, but related to, yes, um, you know, (laughs) you can take, you don't, you can have as much or as little you're in control. Okay. So if, if like, I kind of look at family as, is like this, if, if I wouldn't choose to be your friend, if you wouldn't be a friend of mine, right. Then just because we're related, I respect you that you know, we're related. I love you because we're related, but that doesn't mean that you, you have any of my energy. Yeah. It doesn't mean I want to hang out with you. <laughs> right. and, and so I don't, right. I do it by choice. And, <laughs> you know, I limit the amount of, of exposure that I have yep. with those people. Um, your time is your own, right? I mean, and, and once we realize that our time is our own um, and, and really, and it's so limited, I, I mean, look how, you know, you blink and it's 10 years from now. Yes. So your time mm-hmm. is your own and how do you want to spend it? If you want to spend it with toxic people, go right ahead. But just remember that is your choice. Mm-hmm. It is. Right? You are making that choice. So you're choosing how you want to spend your day, how you want to spend your, your energy and, and what you're looking to do. Cause uh, you know, for me, it's like a lot of this stuff is just not worth it. I mean, we ruminate over stuff too. And we're thinking, and I think to myself, okay, that's just a waste of time and and energy when I could be focusing on something way more important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you're a big um, cheerleader for women to tell their story. I am. And that's one of the things I know that we, we talk, you're a publisher um, you, you write your books, but you again, really want us to, to tell our story. I know we have talked about that, but I feel like that's where we have the story, but you somehow are able to dissect our life into all these little pieces. So we see this in like, oh my gosh, uh, I, you know, going through this, going through that, but you see the bigger picture and what people yeah. are trying to say. Like, I do. Cause I preach re- that manifesting that perfect life. Well, I, I think that, you know, first of all, to write your story, you don't have to have it all figured out. I think people have this misnomer, like, well, I'm mm-hmm. still going through stuff, so I can't write my story. And I'm like, it doesn't have an ending yet. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but that's not the point. <laughs> I know. The point is that it's a very cathartic experience. So, so, you know, we choose, it's not like you can write, you know, your entire life story in 4,000 words. Okay. So, so again, we have to, you know, we sit down and that's part of, you know, what I do is I sit down and I, uh, and we talk about what is it, you know, what is your message? What is it that, that really changed the trajectory of your life and, and, and what, you know, what do you want to say? And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people, um, the reason why it's so important to, because to, is when you're writing, the process itself is healing. Mm -hmm. But at the same yeah. time, you are inspiring. I mean, we all, we all have this thing called the human experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, regardless of where we're from, we all have, we all understand pain. We all understand grief. We all understand you know, excitement and love. And, and we all have our own version of it, but we all experience the mm -hmm. same emotions. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily experience the same. I mean, some people do same illnesses or same, um, you know, experiences, uh, relationships and, and, you know, uh, whether they're toxic or amazing, but we understand this human experience. And, you know, it's, it's always about, you know, I can, if I've gone through this and I can do this, so can you. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's not about having it all figured out, but it really is, um, you know, a way for us to inspire others to help them that understand a, that we're not alone, right? Mm -hmm. There's a big universe. We don't want to feel alone. So there's that human connection that we want right mm -hmm. and as women how i mean we need to have a voice we've been voiceless and powerless for um maybe our whole lives just because you're outgoing or gregarious doesn't mean you have a voice yeah very true hmm. right very and true. right so mm -hmm. i think that it's about sharing your story and how you have, and, and in most cases, we've overcome a lot of things mm -hmm. and you have golden nuggets. You don't even realize you've got. Right. So when people sit down and they're actually starting to go through their lives and, and I've heard it is very cathartic. I've heard that people have all of a sudden a, like a light bulb goes on and they almost find where they want to go from their past, right? I think the pieces start to go together because they really haven't thought in depth about their past that much, right? Right maybe just some of the traumas and that's about it, but there's so much more. Right. Well, I mean, you focus on your trauma, but the whole idea is what you've learned from your trauma. I mean, the idea is that, you know, we've all gone through stuff and we can sit and talk about, woe is me. Look what I've done. Look what I've gone through. Oh, poor me, poor me, poor me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can live our life as a victim or we can live our lives as warriors and, and looking at that and saying, okay, how did we how did we overcome that or have we overcome that maybe there's certain things that you know come up and say oh I see a pattern in my life hmm, I wonder if I should be working on that now right. um right so I think that you know there's things that stem from our our childhood um and and we don't realize that it's affected us so much mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I have never asked any of my authors, so I will never, you know, make anybody write anything that they don't feel comfortable writing or, or whatever. And that's part of the coaching process. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with it, but, um, it's not like, you know, send me your chapter and I'll let you know when it publishes hands <laughs> on most companies are like, you know, send me that chapter. But I, I believe that the whole idea is, is a therapeutic one too, and that it will help you in your future mm -hmm. to even become even more empowered than you already, you know, are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that, that, that's what sets you apart from other publishing companies. You actually will sit down with somebody and it becomes almost like a therapy session because anybody can write a story. Anybody can tell a story. Okay. We will all be honest. Anybody can put words on a paper and preach it and, and say it. Mm -hmm. but you really get to what the core is. And, and, and again, this goes with, um, you've talked about this before perfection versus failure. Mm -hmm. And 
I would want, if I'm going to write my story, I want it to be perfect because I, I don't have, I don't know where it's going. I don't even know where it's been. It's, it's like an up and down thing. Um, and to me, that's where I'm afraid to fail because maybe I'm not there's no failure as being perfect, but mm-hmm. there's no right. And there's no wrong it's experience, right? right? Life. There's no but, right or wrong. So as soon as you kind of, you know, like, God, there's no failing at, at writing your story it, or, or like, how do you do that? It's like, that's impossible. It, what we want to do is have you write it to the best of your ability mm-hmm. and, and write from your soul. And, and so, you know, I mean, and, and I do this because, you know, and I don't, I, I have a lot of education um, with, with uh, NLP and, and, you know, I've got a master, you know, NLP and, and EFT and, and timeline and hypnotherapy and all of these law of attraction certifications and all of these wonderful things that I use to work like my, my toolbox to be able to work with the authors. So yes, it is like a therapy session. Mm -hmm. And every time they write their, you know, I make people rewrite, you know, and again, it's about becoming the best that you can be. Uh And and that's, there's no failing. There's no right or wrong. There is no, you know, uh, I mean, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's going to think that, you know, oh, well, you know, I, I, somebody told me I can't write. Who the hell told you that? I had a professor in university who told me I'd never publish. Right. Well, I, I, okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the next book. course and did my thing. And then, you know, of course, uh, what, 30 odd years later, I published. So, you know, don't let anybody tell you, you can't do something. Mm -hmm. Who who are they? Maybe they're talking about their limitations. Exactly. You know, and they're projecting, I mean, that's the psychological term. They're projecting, you know, all of their limitations and limited beliefs that they have about themselves. So regardless of who they are, whether you're, they're your best friend or they're your business partner or they're your life partner, don't let anybody project their (laughs) views and there's no right or wrong. Somebody somebody told Tom Brady that he was ever going to be a quarterback. I mean, (laughs) yeah, look at him now. He really did. At training camp, they're like, why are you here? Why bother? And look at him. So, and if he would have listened, if he would have had that limiting belief, what would have happened? Right. And so how many people have listened and have, you know, you know, just completely stepped back into the shadows because one person told them, you know what? Yeah. You're just, you're just not good enough or you're not wired to be that or do that. That's yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Usually if one person has said that mm-hmm. it's triggered from something else. Yeah. So like as a, as a, so if somebody, you know, you, you can go back into your own history Mm -hmm. and kind of look and say okay as an adult if somebody told me that I wasn't good enough and that happened a lot Mm -hmm. um and and you're not pretty enough and you're not smart enough and you can't do this and you can't do that Mm -hmm. um and so if I go back in my life I see a whole pattern of people um with that so um now, if I, if I look at it, you know, I mean, again, it's kind of like a psychoanalysis a little bit because um, you're taking that one person, but in fact, it's not just that one person that's telling you this, it's all of these people. And so you shrink yes, and you shrink and slink back to your cocoon where it feels nice and cozy and safe, mm. you know, but in fact, you know, you're, you're not even, you're not, you're not living your potential. You're not living your best self. No, there is no right or wrong when you're living your best self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I love when you, 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 cause you preach this in your social, you talk about it and you really get people to unmask their authentic self, mm-hmm. find their truth, write their story and, and just find your voice is like a big key thing. And, um, Carol, thanks for being real and being raw yeah. with us. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank looking Thank forward you. to the next book. That's for sure. Thank you so much. Congratulations on everything so far. We're so glad that you have joined our sisterhood and that you have some time today to spend with us. Mm -hmm. And um, any last words, Carol, uh, before we wrap this up again, thank you. We'll make sure we post your social links so that people can follow you. you. Just Mm -hmm. be, you know what, if you want to reach out to me, I'm happy to have conversation with you. If you want to share your story, if uh, just get to know me, get to know the groups. And honestly, I, um, 
it's it's practice what you post practice what you preach and know that you are perfectly imperfect and that's okay it's your life story (laughs) yes i love love that you're perfectly imperfect so thank you again carol we will definitely be having you back on life love and lipstick thanks for spending some time with leslie and myself and uh, keep being you and keep being our voice because thank you. Thank you. Love you ladies. Thank you. Love you too, Carol. Thank you so much. Thanks. Pleasure. Thank you for your time. If anybody would like to follow Carol or, uh, you know, hang out on our social, cause we post her stuff as well. You can mm-hmm. find that on life, love and lipstick on Instagram and all your, your social media platforms. And, uh, yeah. Wow. What an incredible and empowering episode. Yes. We needed that. Right. Because there's so much negativity around us right now. We're all struggling and we're all trying to just get by. And it's nice to know that your story is completely acceptable because it's your life and you're yep. living it. And, you know, you just, we all learn our lessons as we're living our lives, right? There's always a story behind something, isn't there, ladies? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Well, in the meantime, until we're back together, I hope everyone has a great day and Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you in a couple of days. Bye. Bye. Life, love, and lipstick.